So I've been having a hard time focusing lately. I mean, I look at Andrew Huberman, I see all the amazing stuff that he's doing. And I'm like, how is this possible? He's running a research lab. He's writing grants. He's a professor. He has one of the fastest growing podcasts in the health space. He's on everyone else's podcasts. He seems to be everywhere. All the girls like him. He's jacked and he seems to be a pretty genuinely happy guy. And meanwhile, I'm over here just derping and I'm wondering like, why is, what's wrong with me? Maybe he knows something that I don't. After spending countless hours of research and devouring his content, I realized that there are three things that Andrew Huberman does that make him ultra productive. But before we get there, let's start with why his morning routine is so genius. So the first thing that Andrew Huberman does is he tracks when he wakes up first thing in the morning. He does this to identify what was his temperature minimum. The temperature minimum is the time in each 24 hour cycle that your body temperature is lowest. Four to six hours after your temperature minimum is the time in your day where you're gonna be most productive and focused. Usually when he wakes up, he doesn't feel super rested and it takes him a while to get up. So he'll immediately do 10 to 30 minutes of yoga nidra. Following that, he goes right outside and takes a 10 to 20 minute walk. This is really important for a few reasons. Getting sun in the eyes in the first hour of the day sets his circadian clock, which regulates the healthy release of cortisol and triggers a cascade of hormonal and chemical signals that will benefit him for the rest of the day. So something that's really cool about these walks is it generates something called optic flow, which means that you're gonna feel less stressed and less anxious because it down regulates this part of your brain called the amygdala. Pretty cool. So usually first thing when he gets home is he's gonna drink 32 ounces of water with some salt in it. <laughs> and then he will usually stay fat adapted or fasted until 11 a.m. to noon. If he decides to eat something, he's usually gonna have some Brazil nuts or some athletic greens. So I finished my morning Routine, 90 minute work sprint, no distractions. I'm gonna do some deep work because that is what Dr. Huberman does. I'm gonna be sipping on my yerba mate. Let's get some shit done. He puts on low level white noise without headphones to increase his levels of dopamine. He uses a stand up desk and he makes sure to use his computer at eye level to help with alertness and focus. So after he's done with that 90 minute work block, he's gonna go for a workout. Three days a week he does strength training, two days a week he does some type of endurance. He optimizes his workout schedule for what's best for the brain and what's best for the body for longevity purposes and the production of BDNF, which is brain derived neurotropic factor. BDNF, it, it makes you feel good. Andrew Huberman's typical workouts never go longer than 60 minutes. He says after that, you start going over the cortisol threshold, so your stress will go up and you're probably not getting more benefit from doing more time and you're probably gonna start losing your ability to focus in your workout. So what's the first thing that Andrew Huberman does that allows him to be so productive and focused? Well, he's optimized his entire life around his circadian rhythm. This is the internal clock that dictates your sleep and wake cycles. So this is regulating two very important hormones called melatonin and cortisol. So there are four main factors that influence the circadian rhythm that Andrew Huberman talks about. Number one being light exposure or light timing. Number two is gonna be meal timing. Number three is going to be movement. And number four is going to be social cues. So by getting up and going for that walk first thing in the morning, he's hitting two factors right away, that light exposure and movement. And with the time-restricted eating and the fasting, he's also managing his meal timing as well and having lunch and dinner at the same time. Having a healthy circadian rhythm means you're getting really, really high quality sleep, and that's gonna massively influence your energy throughout the day and your ability to focus. So I've talked at length about optimizing your circadian rhythm on this channel, and you can go check out any of those other videos after you're done with this one. So after he gets back from training, he's usually gonna have a low carb lunch, depending on how hard he's pushing it that day or, or how heavy with the weights he's going. So the reason why he has a low carb lunch is because starchy carbohydrates will increase serotonin and will make you feel more tired and more lethargic. He takes omegas that are high in DHA and EPA, and he does this for mood and cognition, and this little supplement can act as sort of an antidepressant of sorts. After he's done with his meal, he's gonna go for a five to 30 minute walk. This is gonna help with digestion. This is gonna help with nutrient absorption. It's also gonna bring that blood sugar down. Right when he gets back, he's gonna do something called NSDR, non-sleep deep rest. And his favorite form of NSDR is hypnosis. So he uses this Reverie app to do a quick 10 minute hypnosis to drop him into a relaxed, but focused and alert state. 
So I have this cool, weird like headset thing called BrainTap and it's like hypnosis on steroids. So I'm gonna choose a focus hypnosis and then it has this like light therapy that goes into your ears and into your eyes. It's wild. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a session right now and drop in for like 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> I know, how crazy is that? <laughs> and then I'm gonna wake up and get right back into work. So it's kind of like a nap, but not necessarily, I'm not drowsy or groggy but I definitely feel different than before when I was going into the hypnosis. So after that session, he's gonna drink another 32 ounces of water right before he gets back into work. And so begins another 90 minute deep work session with no distractions. So I just wrapped up filming 30 videos for Instagram and TikTok. I just finished before the time. I still have another like 25 minutes left or so. And I feel insanely productive because I can see how if I keep doing this, I can become really, really prolific at content creation, kind of like Huberman is. Now it's starting to make sense why he might be able to do what he does, especially because he has a team as well. So this was probably the most surprising thing about Andrew Huberman's routine that I discovered is he really only does these two 90 minute work blocks. He'll be lucky if he gets another one in, but if he can get those two in, he says that's a productive day. Combined, that's just three hours of focused work, which may not seem like a lot, but if we added up the total period of time in which you were in deep work, really focused, dedicated work, that it would probably amount to about three or four hours. But I think most people find that one or two of these really deep focused 90 minute work blocks are about what one's schedule and even mind can handle. What's the second thing then that makes Andrew Huberman so productive and focused? Well, he understands neurobiology. He's using his brain chemicals to make him feel and make him do things at a certain time. And he's using these sort of triggers throughout the day to get him into a state that allows him to use those chemicals to the best of his ability. So based on my research, there's four main chemicals that Andrew Huberman talks a lot about. When I say dopamine, just think drive and motivation. When I say acetylcholine, I want you to think adrenaline and focus. When I say serotonin, I want you to think relaxation and contentment. And when I say adenosine, I just want you to think tired in the morning. Simple, I hope. <laughs> so he times his caffeine 90 minutes to two hours after he wakes up. The reason being is he's allowing that adenosine to flush out and by nature of pushing that caffeine window back just a little bit, it's gonna make sure that he doesn't have a crash later on in the day. So with acetylcholine, the fasting, the caffeine, and the working out are all gonna increase that, which are gonna enhance his focus. And then he talks a lot about dopamine scheduling, meaning he's gonna do very specific activities or remove specific activities from his schedule at certain times to increase that drive and motivation. For example, that focus work block with no distractions, white noise that he's having in the background, caffeine, working out, all this stuff increases dopamine as well. And then there's serotonin but we'll get to that in the evening. When I found out that he was only working two 90 minute work blocks most days, I got really disheartened because here this guy is doing all this incredible things and here I am feeling really behind and unfocused. You know, what am I missing? Like there's gotta be something else that this guy is doing that I'm not. <sighs> yeah, I just wonder if there's a way to sort of overcome this. So in the evening, he's gonna have a high carbohydrate dinner and he does this for two reasons. Number one, it's gonna increase serotonin. And then number two, it's going to help him feel more relaxed and fall asleep better. So I'm getting outside for a evening walk to catch this unbelievable sunset. He walks in the morning, he walks after he eats lunch and he goes for a walk in the evening like I'm doing right now. And what I notice when I walk a lot is that I have better digestion, my mood is better, my energy is more uh, sort of consistent, and it gives me a lot more excuses to just like go outside, which I feel like is just important in general. And if we work behind a laptop, then that uh, doesn't happen as much as it should. After the sun goes down, he tries to keep the lights low and avoid as much blue light as possible. This helps with the circadian rhythm and supports in the optimal production of melatonin. When I moved into my place, I switched out all the light bulbs to Philips Hue smart bulbs. That way at 8.30, everything goes red. In my bedroom, I have blackout shades and I turn the temperature down to 69 degrees when it's time to start getting ready for bed. In my bedroom, what you're gonna see here is an eight sleep 
Pod Pro, which is a mattress cover that cools the surface of the bed and also has sensors to track your sleep. So the best supplement for sleep that Huberman also talks about, magnesium, but not just any type of magnesium, you gotta get the right type. This one is a combination of magnesium glycinate, magnesium threonate, and magnesium taurate. I've done a lot of content about magnesium on my channel as well for you to go check out afterwards if you'd like. So what's the last thing that makes Andrew Huberman so focused and productive? Well, I stumbled upon this one podcast where he says this. I mean, unless there's a real emergency, I'm not gonna step away from that work. That's the mentality that I've embedded in myself that there, there's nothing more important than what I'm doing in that 90 minute block. But I really try and achieve this most if not every day that I'm alive because for me, that work session is kind of holy. It's, I'm creating this space rather than allowing whatever events and context on social media and elsewhere might be occurring in the world that would yank me out of what for me is my purpose and my mission in life, which is to do the sorts of work that I do. And that's when it all clicked for me. Third secret that makes Andrew Huberman so productive and so focused his purpose. He is absolutely driven by his mission and that is why he is so focused. I know it sounds cheesy, but it's true. He believes that he is here to do this work and there is nothing more important than what's happening in those 90 minute work blocks for him each and every day. Maybe it's not that you're unproductive. Maybe it's not that you can't focus. Maybe it's that you just haven't found the right thing. Maybe you just haven't found what you love, what you believe is important to you. And as soon as you do, that's when everything's gonna change. I wanna let you know that this video is raising money for Andrew Huberman's foundation, where they study stress, they study fear, they study anxiety. I'm donating right now, and if you feel called to, I would invite you to donate as well. Let's raise some money for Andrew Huberman's lab and foundation so that we can support his research. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in this next video. I know you're gonna love it. I spent a lot of time on them.